trucking is big business. Pretty much in any country around the world, if you go into a shop and you buy something, the chances are it arrived on a truck. And trucking is a trillion dollar business around the world, which is why we as a society need to make the trucking world cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter. I'm here today in Portland, Oregon at Electric Island. It's a, a new partnership between Portland General Electric and Daimler Trucks of North America, and it's the Pacific Northwest's first big rig charging station for trucks. Let's talk about some of the vehicles we've got represented here today. This is the eCascadia prototype. You can tell it's a prototype because it's got a fancy front end and the day cab at the back. Then we've got the production version of the eCascadia and the production version of the EM2 electric truck. Both of these are being produced here in Portland, just down the road at Daimler's production facility and full scale series production of these trucks will enter into operation in 2022. We also have a Proterra electric bus here and there's a Proterra charging station at the far end of the plaza. And that's because the local transit authority uses Proterra buses. I see them regularly on the roads in and around Portland and have been for a number of years. So we already have electric trucks on the road. We already have electric buses on the road. And there was even a prototype non-electric big rig just going around the corner, but we're gonna ignore that because today we're focusing on electric. At today's launch, I'm lucky enough to talk to Maria Pope, who is CEO and president of the local utility company, Portland General Electric. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me today, Maria. Tell us how important it is to have the electric island up and functional. You know, what we see here today is really important in terms of a demonstration of what collaboration and partnership are here. Bringing together truck manufacturing, bus manufacturing with the utility allows us to work together and I like to say really create synergies where it's not too much conformity can high. When we look here, the across all of everything we've got going on due to our teams coming together to collaborate and work together. Now, PGE is one of the largest utilities in the region. You serve the majority of the Portland metro area, as well as a lot of the customers out towards the coast. How does this fit in with your corporate vision in the future, with renewable energies coming in and providing green transit for everyone? Well, we are a utility that represents our customers' values and the values of the communities we serve. We represent about half of the state's population and three quarters of the industrial and commercial activity. And our customers are very clear that they want a clean energy future. They want sustainability and they also want us to look beyond just electricity production to partnering with people like Daimler North America to create a clean energy future for all Oregonians. And we know that the largest source of emissions is actually the vehicles that we drive and the trucks we And obviously it's something that PGE is presumably looking at is electrifying its own fleet. Can you talk to us about how that's progressing? Yes, we have aggressive goals to electrify our fleet from small vehicles, passenger size, all the way to our line trucks. And we're reconfiguring each of our line centers to be able to do this efficiently and effectively, and to be able to utilize the kinds of technologies that we're demonstrating here in our partnership with Dynamo. One of the exciting things about electric vehicles is the fact that they use electricity as a fuel, which for a utility is a really exciting thing because you've gone from providing power to people's homes and to businesses, so now being able to help power the actual fleet of the nation, where do you think electric as a fuel is going to go in the future? Well, first of all, I think it's really important to recognize that over 100 years ago, we electrified industry, we electrified communities, we electrified really utilities outside America. And today, we're what we're doing is re electrified. We've created opportunities for efficiency, for conservation. Today, we have, are highly efficient in our electric use in our homes and our businesses. So we have capacity to be able to fuel trucks like these with electricity, and increasingly from wind and solar resources, other renewables. The Pacific Northwest are blessed with hydro, and that's what really makes the 
for the future, yeah. for the environment, to be able to combine all those technologies together. Now, Governor Brown and other governors in the Pacific Northwest have laid out some pretty aggressive goals for going 100% zero carbon. How is that journey going for yourself and all the other utilities in the region? I know you, you all collaborate on, on such massive goals, right? We do. We work west-wide, but we also work nationwide. And we're also part of research that's global. We know that this is a global problem and we all have to be part of the solution together. So in Oregon, what we're really focused on is making sure that we are hitting goals to have our energy supply be as clean and green as possible. 80% reductions by 2030. And then we're moving to 100% of our electricity use by customers by 2040 to be all renewable. It's aggressive, but the partnership that we have with Bible Junctions America and with others, we're able to absolutely see uh, realization of the future. And we will also continue need to get to 2040 additional new technology. It is a super exciting time. As a recent new customer on the feed-in tariff, we've just put 15.13 kilowatts on our home. It is great to see people working at the forefront with companies like Daimler, and I wish you all the best in the future. Well, Thanks thank you. you. And thank you for your generation. It's part of our solution. Thank you. Thank you. At the other end of the parking lot from the E-Cascadia, we have a Thomas school bus. This looks just like an all-American yellow school bus except it is, of course, 100% electric. Thomas is a subsidiary of Daimler Trucks North America, and it uses batteries from Proterra, which you may recognize because Proterra has been in the electric bus world for a really long time. It produces some of the most powerful, some of the longest range electric buses on the market. And there's actually Proterra buses roaming the streets of Portland. The local transit authority has a whole fleet of them that it uses for various routes, including the local park and ride near to me. And I say near to me, about 20 miles from where I live. The Proterra powered Thomas school bus is now in service across the US. Sadly, there are none in service here in Portland. There are none in the state of Oregon. There's some in California, some in Alaska, some across the Midwest, and some along the Eastern seaboard. So if you see that logo, you'll know that the bus is electric. I'm also lucky enough to talk to John O'Leary, who's the president CEO of Daimler Trucks North America. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Tell me about the eCascadia program. Tell me about the Electric Island and how important it is to you as a company. The future of transportation is battery electric in the US, particularly. Uh, important for us because we actually build these two right down the street from here. So it's a very local product with a lot of local development on the engineering side as well. So we actually had a team of people who volunteered to do this, not, not volunteered in terms of no pay, but they wanted to be involved. They wrote an application letter to the team lead to say why they were so passionate about electric vehicles. And so they, uh, they got selected that way. So it's really people that truly believe in the technology and really want to make a difference. Now building class eight big rigs as an electric big rig is no mean feat. That's correct. What did you all have to bring to the table that you didn't have from your internal combustion engine truck fleet? Yeah, I mean, it's very different in all ways. I mean, for sure, it looks the same if you just look at it from the outside, but basically the internals under the hood are completely different. So, you know, you don't have like a standard transmission, you don't have a standard axle, you don't have a diesel engine, right? And all those moving parts and noise and heat and everything else, it's a much more quiet product uh, and obviously a much simpler product in terms of operating and, and things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very different and caused us to have to think in very different ways. Detractors have said, are bound to say these are just prototypes they're not real but that's far from the truth you've been operating a prototype and test fleet program for a large number of years tell us very briefly about the, the feedback that you've all had yeah so we operate 40 of these in southern california primarily in the port area there and uh we've gotten really good feedback from them and it, it, they've been great learning opportunities for us too to understand you know where are the things that we need to tweak in terms of from a maintenance standpoint to make it easier to work on or you know, what do we have to do to make it better? We are a continuous improvement organization. We're always trying to do better, and it's a great learning opportunity for us. Daimler Trucks North America are working on a great number of very impressive and exciting new projects. You've been working on semi-autonomous and autonomous technology and alternative fuels. What do you feel the future of trucking looks like? 
So yeah, the future, you know, down the road, and it's it's many years down the road, I'd say, for this total picture. But you know, down the road, you could easily imagine an autonomous truck uh, without a driver that's going from one place to the other. Uh, today, they can do that pretty easily, point to point on major highways. Uh, but to actually travel in cities and things like that safely, which is the the primary consideration, we're still a long ways away from being to that point. But you could easily imagine, you know. 20 years down the road where you've got vehicles that don't have people in them, that are operated by computer, mainly from driving centers that are monitoring, humans are actually monitoring them, uh, and are powered either by uh, battery electric or hydrogen fuel cells. And so that's, you know, that's certainly where this is going, longer term. Thank you so much for your time today. Wish you all the best with your future endeavors with the battery electric trucks. Can't wait to see them on the road. Thank you. And delivering goods and services, because let's face it, America needs trucks. Absolutely, no, nothing goes any place without a truck. So thank you for your, your interest in being here today. Great to have you. Thank, thank you so much. Hey, Jason. Hello. So, Jason, you are gonna be taking me on a little drive around the local streets yep. in a pre-production version Correct. of the eCascadia. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. So we built, um, 20 of these initially, we have um, 40 total prototypes in California. Uh -huh. And so 20, 26 of this version that are being used by our customers down there. Cool, let's, let's make it happen. Okay, we're already running. Which is, you know, crazy. Yeah. So the only thing you're hearing is the brakes coming off. Yep, and at up to a certain speed, you won't hear anything but a little bit of inverter whine noise, similar to, um, the uh, bumper cars, I think, is a good reference. <laughs> That's a competition, getting a look in. So you were saying that this is not representative of the final production truck, you still upgrading and switching things out between what you've got now which is limited production and the final production which is due to start next year right so these are just prototypes and we're, we're gathering data and learning from it and so the designs are are much different for sure it's um this is something that we had pieced together in a very short time to get something out there and and uh, test and see how our customers like it i mean it's a lot smoother than you know the 18 speed big rigs that i've been in yes how does it change your opinion of of big rigs after driving you know standard internal combustion engine vehicles yeah it's definitely a game changer if you you notice there's no shifting involved it's a single speed on this one and since the motors on the axle drive direct to the tire, there's no twisting of the cab either, there's no drive line, such like that. And so the fatigue at the end of the day is much less than in a diesel vehicle. And you actually have a little bit more space in the cabin because you don't have to worry about having a shifter or multiple shifters. Yeah, so there's the, the shifters on the stock, it's similar to an automated manual transmission um, up here on this stock switch. And so, it, the biggest benefit is is the quietness, the smoothness, and then the regenerative braking, which I can activate um, now. You can feel how wow. aggressive that is. That yeah. was just the motors putting energy back into the batteries. And so by using that, when you lift your foot off the throttle, it'll start slowing you down. If you plan ahead, you can avoid using the service brake entirely, except for, you know, coming to a complete stop. And that of course has some safety benefits, especially if you're working on like some big grades and you've got a big um, a big load on the back. Yes. Yeah, definitely can hold back heavy loads going down big hills. In terms of where you think these trucks are gonna be the most advantageous over their internal combustion engine counterparts, is there any particular industry that you think is really going to benefit or a particular sector of the industry that you think is going to benefit? Well, right now, all of the in-town deliveries and 
definitely the, the stop and go because you use that regenerative braking. I think that's the biggest benefit right now. And how's the feedback been from from like the people who've been driving these day in and day out? As I mentioned, it's the I think the fatigue has been the the biggest um, improvement over driving a diesel vehicle. Huh. We're just going past the uh, the box truck, which is a class six or class seven, and this is a class eight, right? It's, Correct. It's this is a... class eight. That is class six. So this requires a CDL, uh -huh. and that's why that that unit back there is is a little bit. Um, more friendly to, to other drivers that, that may not have a CDL. Right. So anyone can get in and drive it. But even then, I mean, that's still a big, a big beast for your average, yeah. your average car driver. Do you think that um, truckers as a whole are going to embrace electric as a choice? Because there are some differences. Obviously, you have to be a little bit more controlled about where you're taking your brakes, where you're taking your stops. Yeah, definitely could take some more planning. Fuel's not as readily available. It does take a little longer to charge or refill. Most drivers are very skeptical at first because they're not real sure if it's going to work. But after they've been in the vehicle for a week or two, they don't usually want to go back to driving a diesel. <laughs> that is brilliant to know. Yeah. And I think it's it really highlights how important it is that all different transportation sectors get the chance to electrify. Exactly. Yeah, if we can do it in trucks, I think we can do it with everything. <laughs> well, in terms of experience from my perspective, it really does feel very smooth, very quiet. There's no rumbly engine underneath you like you'd have in a regular big rig. And the actual experience feels like any electric vehicle that I've been in it's just bigger it's just a truck it's yep. actually really comfortable and really smooth and I'm surprised at how free it is in terms of there's no there's no bumps or or, or weird noises and that makes a really nice difference to a lot of the big rigs I've traveled in in the past granted I haven't done a lot of big rig travel for the last 20 years but I've had some of my experiences Jason thank you so much thank you it is so exciting to be here today. Thank you to Daimler Trucks North America for having us. We didn't know about it until the very last minute, but it is so exciting to see electric buses, electric trucks become part of our future world. And I know there are plenty of other companies out there working on electric transit and electric buses and electric trucks, but the more coverage that we can give, we think the better. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreons. That's Anonymous Freak, Ray Jean Fellows, Gordon C, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, and Tesla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you would like to join the ranks of wonderful, amazing Patreon supporters, you'll find links below to that, as well as links for Bitcoin and Kofi. You can chat with the team and TE fans over at Discord. And if you'd like to buy some TE swag like this, just head over to our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.